Chords are very important as they are one of the key components that separate Western music from other types of music. A chord is three or more notes that are played together. The most common type of chords are three note chords known as triads. That will be the subject of this video. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Andres and you are currently watching the fourth video in the music theory series. If you would like to watch the other videos, you can click here. Please remember that this series is focused towards the theory part. In the future, we're going to be taking all these concepts and applying them. So I'm going to be uploading videos. We're going to go on each of these topics and use them in a practical way. As usual, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep you posted when the new videos in the series come out. Okay, back to chords. We can divide chords into two categories, diatonic and non-diatonic chords. Diatonic chords are derived from a scale, while non-diatonic chords arise from less structured note combinations. The topic of chords is quite extensive and can get very complicated very fast, so we will explore it little by little. This lesson does not cover all possible chords as there is too many. We will start with diatonic chords in their simplest form, triads. We can build a triad by taking three alternate notes of a scale, that is, every other note. This is called harmonizing a scale, also known as stacking thirds. For example, here we have the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C again. If we start with the first note of the scale, we have C. Then we skip a note, that would be D, and we land on E. That's the note we're gonna take. We do the same thing again. We skip a note, and then we land on the G. We already have the three notes we need to build a triad, C, E, and G. By playing these notes together, we get what is known as the C major chord. Now we're gonna analyze these three notes a little more. E is the major third from C and G is the perfect fifth. These intervals are what define a major chord. To be more precise, the major third is the one that defines a major chord. So what we've gotten here is basically a formula to build major chords. This is we need a root or tonic, a major third, and a perfect fifth. If we have three notes that follow this pattern of intervals, we have a major triad. And when we play them together, we are playing a major chord. It does not matter which three notes we have. If the distance between the notes corresponds to this pattern, then the chord is a major chord. The reason why the process we just did is known as stacking thirds is because the notes are within a third of each other. From C to E, we have an interval of a major third, while from E to G, a minor third. The concept of stacking thirds is going to be very relevant in future videos, so please don't forget it. In the same way that we started with C in the previous example, we can repeat the same process, but this time we start with the second note of the C major scale, therefore D. We would then obtain the following notes, D, F, and A. If we analyze this triad a little bit more in detail, we will see that the interval between D and F is a minor third, and the interval from D to A is a perfect fifth. The fact that the second note is a minor third away from our starting point, in this case the D, defines that this chord is minor. We then obtain a new chord formula. The minor chord is built using the following intervals, a tonic or root note, a minor third, and a perfect fifth. If we continue building chords by stacking thirds and starting each time on a different note of the C major scale, we will obtain the following results. Starting on E, we get E, G and B. Attention here to the minor third between E and G. Therefore, we have an E minor chord. Starting on F, we have F, A, and C. We again have a major third between the F and the A. This first interval between the first two notes is very important and we always have to look for it. Since we have here a major third again, we have a major chord. Starting on G, we get then G, B, and D. Again, a major third between the first and the second note, hence a G major chord. When we start doing the same process on A, we get then A, C, and E. We can notice that between the A and the C, we have a minor third. Therefore, we get an A minor chord. And finally, we have B. 
something very interesting happens here. We have the triad B, D, F. We can see that between B and D, we have a minor third, and between B and F, a diminished fifth. This chord is known as a diminished chord, and is characterized by the minor third and the diminished fifth. I want you to keep three very important concepts in mind. One, the formulas for building chords are as follow. Major chord, we need a root, a major third, and a perfect fifth. For a minor chord, we need a root, a minor third, and a perfect fifth. And for a diminished chord, we need a root, a minor third, and a diminished fifth. Please remember, there are many types of chords, not just these three. We will see those chords and learn about those chords later in other videos. But for now, with these three chords, you can already do a lot of things. The second thing that I want you to keep in mind is that it does not matter which major scale we choose, if we use the stacking thirds method or the every other note method, starting each time on a different note, the type of chords that we obtain from a major scale will always be in the following order. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, and diminished. This point is very important. Please don't forget it. The third thing I want you to keep in mind is that the sum of the notes that make up a scale plus the chords we obtain by harmonizing that scale is what we call a key. We'll go more in depth about keys in future videos, but for now I just want you to keep that in the back of your head. Since we have a fixed pattern for the types of chords we get from a major scale, it doesn't matter if we're getting our chords from the C, D, F sharp, or whatever other major scale you choose. Therefore, we can generalize the chords you get from a scale and assign them numbers. This is also known as the Nashville number system. Let's take a look at an example. In the key of G, and I know I said that we're gonna take a look at keys later on, but just bear with me for a moment. The first chord in this key is a G major chord. We represent this with an uppercase Roman numeral. The second chord is an A minor. We represent this with a lowercase Roman numeral. And for the diminished chord, we use a lowercase Roman numeral with a circle in the upper right corner. The chords in a major key would then be numbered in the following way. We would have an uppercase Roman numeral for the 1, 4, and 5 chord, and a lowercase Roman numeral for the 2, 3, 6, and 7 chord. The 7 chord has the small circle, as I told you before. This allows us to generalize the positions in a key and facilitate understanding and communication. This will be very useful when we see chord progressions and when we talk about functional harmony. In the same way that we harmonize a major scale, we can harmonize a minor one. Let's use the C minor scale as an example. After doing the harmonization, we get the following chords. A, C minor, D diminished, E flat major, F minor, G minor, A flat major, and B flat major. As with the major scales, the chords that we get from a minor scale follow a pattern. The first one is minor, the second one is diminished, the third is major, the fourth and the fifth are minor, and the sixth and the seventh are major. The chords that we obtain after harmonizing a scale are known as diatonic chords. If we ask another musician, hey, uh, what key are we in? And he or she tells us we are in G major, then we know which chords belong to that key. Chords that are going to sound good with each other. In the next video, we will explore chords with four notes, known as seventh chords. That knowledge is gonna help us to then tackle the topic of keys, so don't miss it. If you like this video, don't forget to like it and share it. And if you liked it a lot and you want to support my work, you can do so using the link in the description. Thanks for watching and see you soon.